just reviewing a video I had a slight idea. Sean said, are you updating the Pythagorean theorem? This is in one of the videos. Uh, the one about, I was updating the diagram, I said. I said, I'm updating the diagram. It was about EMC2 and about um, its relation to Einstein being super clear, right? The most clear representation I've ever tried to make. And Sean said, are you updating the Pythagorean theorem? So now, now that I'm thinking about it, look, he's got three sides. That's what he said next. That's what Sean said next. There's three sides. There is three sides. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So you got a triangle. Do, do, do. Now what happens if that triangle, there's triangles, there's trinities in our theory as well. There's a merging of two polarities to get the third, right? The third emergent thing. And then the, the two base forces always equal out to zero. But they can go radically swinging in infinite potential either directions to equal each other out. So what if that triangle could be an uh, uh, equilateral triangle or an isosceles triangle stretch out and that third stretching Oh, has an equal stretching in the opposite direction, and it's a crystal. Uh, so every triangle has a has an opposite triangle, and then there's a there's a diamond, and so it's not a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared squared. The whole thing's squared. Fuck, we are doing Pythagorean's theorem. Interesting. Oh, and that's the, that's the representation of the thematic triangle that I was doing yesterday. Perot Brandt's theory of somatic syntax. Perot, yes, I finally integrated his knowledge. This Perot was my mentor back in when I was at Case Western, right? And Perot is a magical, magical person. Super, knows like 10 languages, knows everything. Theoretician, Renaissance man, my role model. Um, and he had this theory called somatic syntax. It was a theory of language. It was about how to take language, the meaning of language, it's, it's spoken, this is one dimension, right? You hear one thing in, in time, and then it has a meaning, which is three dimensions, like pictures and stuff like that. But there's a two-dimensional thing there that's structuring and confining what those pictures mean, right? And Pro was onto it. He had eight nodes in his thematic syntax, and these, each node was recursive and had eight nodes with, it had, could have those eight nodes within it. So he had a structure of language, and we all sat down and we would play language games basically and stematize them. Stematime. It's stematime. <laughs> and we would get together and do some linguistics with Perot, and he would always be able to stematize it once he reasoned it through, and we all agreed this is the, this is the thing. But Perot always had to be there for the really hard ones. That was the problem with the theory. We could never do it on our own, even me and Max. Me and Max were both clever guys. But we struggled because we're like, is this a four or a five? I don't know. This proposition is kind of tricky. It's, a, it's a both a directive and a, uh, you know, a manner. It's both in one. It's, you know, let's ask Perot tomorrow. You know, and then we would debate it with Perot. Perot would come up with a definitive solution, and it would make sense. And we would say, yeah, that's probably true, Perot. But there might be m other ways to interpret it. That's the point. It's hard. It was difficult. But n and it seemed uh, impossible. But it wasn't impossible. We just weren't doing it right, I think. So once we you start using that as an org or a, just an organized like a container structure, instead of trying to do it with language, we just do it with we assign meanings to each of those eight things, and then each of them are less granular than the one before it. You know, they contain each other; they're self-containing, and um, and then they can contain each other within each branch, right? And then um, and that's a way to just organize this stuff and keep a tabs on it, like a, like a Huey decimal system. <laughs> And so we're going to use thematic syntax and Perot's theory and what I learned from him, because I'm already learning, I'm already using the collaborative, you know, teachings that Perot has bestowed upon me through my efforts with other people and sharing knowledge and being open and trying to have the spirit of science. You know, he, he's a true scientist, and, um, and this, this theory would have never come about without him, you know. And so it's good that we're, I'm finally realizing the link with stomatic syntax because I always knew something was right there, something was there, but I never knew how to exactly push it all the way through. And now this, just yesterday, I just made the link and drew the triangles, and now it's related to Pythagorean's theorem somehow or another. And I think it has to do with the, equal, um, the conservation of energy, actually. The, um, when these things, when the two forces, there's a trinity, right, two create the third emergent force, um, and then those two trinities can oscillate in intensities, but they have to cancel each other out in order for that third force to remain emergent, right? But their, their oscillations affect the nature of that emergent thing such that the more they diverge from equilibrium, 
It's like an investment of energy, right? And it changes the fundamental structure of that thing, that third emergent thing. So this is all very abstract, and I'm going to have to draw it, and I'll show you the drawing afterwards. But I just wanted to get it down in the fresh stages. And you saw a few discoveries as we were watching just now, talking about pro stuff, Pythagorean theorems, things like that. So that was cool. Um, so I got that down, so that was good.